Welcome everybody. In this video, we're going to take a look at recreating AutoMapper using IL code generation. Now, this is a part two video. In the previous video, we did the expression API recreation of AutoMapper. If you're interested in that or other parts that I'm going to create later, make sure to subscribe or check out the description. I'm going to put all the links in there, including the source code that is going to be available. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and get started. So we're in a familiar situation here where we have A and B and we want to map from one to the other. We're not going to do the whole example in Linkpad because it doesn't play too well with assembly generation. But uh, what I'm going to show you here is a way to work with IL code generation. That is specifically being able to kind of know what IL code you want to generate beforehand, which simplifies everything so much. What we would create if we wouldn't have IL code generation is we would go public class, some kind of, you know, mapper class, which would not pubic, uh, we want public uh, and uh, we want to return B and this would map an instance of A, you know, put things in correct places and then we would create a new B and, uh, well, you know, uh, all too familiar story and this is why auto mapper exists right you don't want to be typing this out uh, so many times but this is the code that we would create and if i try to run this uh, don't forget the semicolon in linkpad i would get something like this this would give me access to the source code or rather the il code that is generated on the back of this so this is mapper.map it's this method now this IL code, I like it a little bit more than SharpLab. It's a little bit more succinct and uh, you will see why in a minute. We're going to take all of this code. So if you don't have LinkPad, you can use SharpLab, which is uh, an online code inspector or whatever. Uh, you can basically see what IL code gets generated here as well. And you can see it's a little bit ver more verbose, uh, but essentially you will still find your map function and you will still be able to see the IL code here. But here you'll see like instance, instance, like uh, some gunk here. Basically, it's a little bit more verbose here. That's why I like LinkPad a little bit more, but basically you can reach this result either way. So let's just take this code. We know what we're working with. We're going to go to writer where I have a similar setup, just class A and class B. I'm going to paste this over here and I'm just going to comment all of this out just as a reference point that we can work against. Now, the next part is IL code generation. We want to be able to create a type with the code, which essentially contains this code, but created dynamically. For this, we're going to go look for a type builder class where here you're going to have an example. Uh, again, I don't work on code like this so much, so I'm just going to go ahead here. I know this is a reference point I can keep coming back to if I need to generate some IL code, but uh, this is my go-to place, right? So public, uh, we're going to have void and then we can say create mapper. This is what we can call it for now. Uh, again, this is in the program CS class, so we don't have to say public. This is just going to be on the internal program class. And let me just import all the relevant namespaces. For the assembly name, uh, dynamic assembly example, we can rename it to something like internal mapper assembly this whole top part doesn't matter too much so i'm just gonna go ahead and format it a little bit i removed a bunch of new lines and we can refer to this as the base setup but the point of interest for us is the type builder here we're going to create our type and specifically the thing that we are trying to create is this mapper so let's go ahead and call it mapper we can make the generator class private by saying not public and then when we go to the type builder, this is where we can say, all right, on this type, let's define a method. We're going to grab this code and we're going to move it right over here, just so it's a little bit closer to where we're working. If we take a look at the signatures of the defined method, we want to give it a name, which is going to be map and then some method attributes like is it static, is it public, private, whatever. And then uh, the return type, which is going to be this type right here, and then the parameter types. So let's call this map. We will say that it's going to be public uh, so we can actually reach it. And then we're also going to be saying that it is uh, static, right? Because uh, we just accept a value and we spit out a value. We don't have any state that we have to take care of. Uh, the type that we're going to be spitting out is type B. So for now, we can just go ahead and refer to it as type of B. And then the parameters here are pretty simple. This is just going to have type of A. For this, I will hide the solution explorer and I'll just flatten this out by parameters, just like so. So it's maybe a little bit easier to see. 
but this will essentially give us a method builder. This would be the equivalent of writing out about yay much without the actual body. Now the body for which the IL code actually exists right here, this is the next part where we wanna start emitting that. So into the method builder, we go ahead and look for IL, get IL generator. We get the generator and for gen, we go ahead and start emitting op codes. All right, and you wanna match these op codes to these instructions here. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you the struggle some people go through when developing these because basically you can't debug it. The errors aren't very descriptive, like a compiler error. So, you know, this could be quite a challenge if you mess some things up. So the first thing is we create a new object, right? So opcode and then a new OBJ right there. The next thing we have to watch out for, we're not looking just for the type B, we're looking for the constructor of the type B. So let's take type B. We're gonna put it above all of these IL instructions and I'm just gonna call it to type. Semicolon on the end. From the to type, we wanna go ahead and get the constructor for type empty types. This is gonna get you the default constructor. And let's not forget to put to type right over there. Next thing is a dupe. So let me just uh, copy this line. I'll remove the type as there is nothing on the right hand side of this. We just want dupe, whatever that means. I mean, I don't know. I can still produce code that works on the back of it, even though I don't know what it does. L drag uh, L or L D arg load arg at stack position. I think that's what it is. Uh, we then call virtual and here well, we're calling virtual on the getter method. So it's a method of the property. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to our type A. So let's go ahead and put this over here. We're going to supply A and we'll call this from type. So we're going from one type to the next. I'll take from type. I'll make sure that we still supply it as a parameter. And here I will try to extract a property. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna say, get me the property ID. And then on the property info, you will have the get method. So if you don't know, a property is three parts. It's a field, a getter method, and a setter method. Through reflection, you can reach any one of those three parts. In this case, we're interested in the get method. Then what we want to do is we want to go to the same thing, but on the B class, and we wanna get the setter method. So we take the two type, we take the two, again, we're looking for the ID property, and then we get the set method. If we take a look at the next block, it's pretty much repeating itself. So what I'm gonna say is, this is about as much code as we need for transferring a single property from one to another. And then finally we call return. I'll just duplicate this over here. I'll place this like this, just to separate out the actual mapping of the properties. And at the end, I'll say ret. This bit right here, which is separated out, I want to do it for each individual property. I'll go to the uh, from type. I'll get uh, my properties. So get uh, properties and then uh, for each property, I want to do this. So instead of actually naming them, I want to just use them directly. And uh, same as the previous implementation, if the B type doesn't have this property, we just want to go ahead and skip which will require us to look for a property right at the beginning of the loop with the same name. So property name, see if that is contained on the two type and we'll call it two prop. If uh, two prop is null, uh, continue. Basically we have a property on the A class. We don't have anything to map it to, uh, just skip. Uh, otherwise take the two prop and get its setter method and map the properties. And uh, this is essentially it. Now this has a couple of errors, which we will fix, but I just wanna highlight some of the problems that you can run into. So we've created our method. Uh, our class is rather simple. It only has one method. We now want to actually emit uh, the class, right? The type, let's actually stamp it. I don't know, like uh, build it, right? Uh, let's go to our type builder. We're gonna go ahead and uh, build, not build, uh, create type. And this is our type. From here, we can actually reach for this method and use it as we want to. So from create mapper, let's create map method. And uh, you know, if you've used reflection, you know, you can basically just extract the method. So at the end, let's return. And I forgot to say that this is going to be a method info on the type. 
we're gonna get a method a map and this is going to be public and static and uh, for the parameters that it accepts uh, will be uh, the from type yeah so from type and whatever it converts to will be the end result of the get method okay so going back to the top we're just going to create map method so var map now we're just going to invoke it with a new a we want to say something really simple and this is going to be our b and we want to convert it here uh, so the me the actual instance on which we're invoking this will be null because it's a static method and here uh, Let's just supply an array of arguments again. We are going to simplify this a little bit further, but this is what we have right now uh, Finally classes don't have a very pretty print So I'm just gonna write in line and I'm just gonna output these two properties ID and uh, holy camoly um, That tooltip was pretty annoying. Uh, we're just gonna output something like this so format the code, let's go ahead and uh, .NET run and actually got to be in the project for this one. So .NET uh, run. And here it is, our program crashed. Uh, the reason for it is common language runtime detected an invalid program. Uh, that's all you get. Sometimes the errors are a little bit more descriptive, but this is pretty much the main sauce that you're going to be dealing with. Okay, so it's just going to tell you your program is invalid, uh, go make it valid. Okay, and that's all you have to work with. Let's remove the console right line. Uh, the example that we have uh, taken here, I'm just going to go ahead and straight up give you the answer of why it's wrong. Otherwise, you can go ahead and see what the differences are. So we pause the video here. Otherwise, uh, the solution to this is we are creating a static map method so we actually want to call this static and what this is going to change to is having ld arg 0 instead of ld arg 1 now i don't know what this really means i will update this example for correctness i'm assuming ld arg 0 would refer to the instance itself so like the this instead of ld arg 1 would refer to the parameter 1 in the constructor which is my interpretation of it. I'm, you know, not going to be arguing it with anybody. I'm probably incorrect, uh, but yeah, we just want to change this to LD arg zero. Since we're in a static method and uh, we don't have the this, we just have the parameter. So it's going to be in position zero. And that's pretty much my interpretation. But there it is. Let's go ahead and rerun it. And there we have it. Finally, I'm putting one and foo to the console. So automatically mapping from A to B. Uh, let's put this around a little bit more a nicer interface with adding some caching. So public class mapper with a public static t map t for the parameter that we put in. I'm just going to supply object for the verbosity of the interface. Uh, I'm going to create a cache straight away. So let's create private read only dictionary. Uh, Let's do something like type type again. And then finally storing method info is going to be cache and whoa, can't write code today. Must need a break. So anyway, uh, right. So key, uh, this is going to be get type of V and then the thing that we're returning, which is going to be type of uh, T and I'm not sure why I'm returning B from there. This is meant to be generic. If cache and uh, yeah, let's make sure it's static. Cache contains key, key, and doesn't. This is when we want to fill the cache. So let's copy this method right here. Make sure we put it on the mapper itself. We'll have to convert the method to being static. We'll call create map method. And for this, we're going to actually need to map these parameters. So let's type and type and make sure that we give it the names. So from type and to type remove this and pass key item one and key item two at the end we will do this following invocation so let's just copy about yay much cache uh, get the map method call invoke on it uh, the actual parameter that we're going to be passing in here is going to be the object and uh, finally at the end we're just going to map it to t uh, this should get rid of most of the errors and now we can actually use mapper in a more convenient way mapper map uh, to b and then let's take the object that we used to supply delete the rest 
and pass it as an argument. Uh, finally, bring up the console. Let's first delete the old method and rerun this. And there we go, AutoMapper using IL code generation. Uh, let's add a kind of, well, a similar example where we have a word and body where we just add some nonsense over here. Rerun this. We still have one and foo and, well, really because uh, I'm not doing anything uh, too exciting with this actually, but just not printing it at all. So now we're actually printing body. So I'm expecting to just still see the same result. And now if I rename this word to body, it's actually going to start mapping it to the B class. And there it is. This will be it. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you've never touched IL code generation, uh, do not despair. If you ever need to use this feature, it is not astronomically hard. Just use a tool that allows you to inspect what actual IL code gets generated by the usual C sharp code you write and then just well apply some problem solving logic the way you do with all different parts of programming and you're gonna get there in the end. So it may look intimidating, but it's not all that. The problems here is that bad errors and you can't debug. So if you try to generate complicated IL code, you know, yeah, you might get a little bit stuck. Don't forget to like, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Big shout out to all of my patrons who are supporting me. It really helps out a lot. And if you're not supporting me on Patreon, please do consider. Don't forget to check out the description. Stay healthy and have a good day.